Hi, everybody. We're so happy and excited to be here and chat with you guys today. Um, this uh, talk is about exercise and motherhood and getting your sexy back. Um, my name is Pamela Mehta. I'm a board certified orthopedic surgeon. Um, I also have three children and we're all going to introduce ourselves right now. Um, so my um, fitness journey started probably uh, late high school, early college. Before that, I had never worked out before. Um, and I grew up in your typical South Asian household where um, you know, we, we studied a lot, but probably weren't as active as we could have been. Um, and I joined sports to check off the box so I could get into college, but I wasn't really good at any of them or practiced them. Um, I remember when, you, I think it was in the sixth or seventh grade when you had to run the mile. Um, I couldn't even believe that other girls were running the whole thing because I probably walked 85% of it. Um, so I was not an in shape person. I was always like skinny, but not in shape at all. And I think at some point, the end of high school and beginning of college, I really wanted to be strong. And so I um, developed a little bit of a um, uh, kind of passion for um, working out, both doing cardio and starting to lift weights and um, that is actually what's really helped me through all the periods of transition of my life, going from college to med school and the med school to residency. Um, residency, as you, some of you are, our residents, um, is very stressful. And for me, that was kind of the one um, steady, constant thing in my life. Um, after having children, it's been more difficult. Um, I definitely work out still, but probably not with the same amount of passion and fervor that I had when I had a lot of time on my hands. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but um, I'm gonna hand it off to Salima to introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Salima Thobani. I am an allergist immunologist, so I take care of kids and adults for all things allergy. Um, I'm also an asthma specialist. Food allergy is part of one of my passionate things. I'm also a mommy to four, so I had four kids in five years. And um, I honestly would say my fitness journey started after I had kids. That's not to say I didn't work out before I did. Um, I consistently probably worked out from college onwards. But it was one of those things where I would get on the treadmill or the elliptical machine and I was just on there and I would do the warm up, the cool down. I'd be on there for 45 minutes um, and, and I did that. And I didn't really have you know, a, a process in place. I never went into the weight room. I never used resistance bands. I was just there to work out because it was something that I had to do um, and not something that I really understood. Well, you know, I didn't appreciate the changes that you know, working out can, can do for your body. And so once I had kids, I went back to working out the way I knew how to work out, which was get back onto the elliptical, get back onto the treadmill. And I found myself struggling. And really it was, um, I saw no change happening. And um, I, I realized that in five years, my body was just a different body. And a lot of things had changed um, and things that I, I never even thought about. You know, when I was like, oh, I'm gonna have kids, it's gonna be great. And you know, you go through this like image that you give birth and the next morning you're gonna be this baby's out of your tummy, you know, like you're gonna look fabulous again. And I remember waking up with my first one and looking in the mirror and being like, what is going on? I still look pregnant. And that's when it was like, okay, you know, things have changed now. And so that's, that's sort of when the onset of my, my journey began. So now I'm gonna hand it off to Poonam. Hi guys, um, I'm Poonam. I'm a board certified um, adult and pediatric ER doctor. I did my fellowship in ultrasound. And due to my passion in health and fitness, I actually got board certified in lifestyle medicine recently when I started health coaching. Um, on various topics from fitness to nutrition to precision medicine. My fitness journey started shortly after college when I stopped dancing. So like a lot of Indian girls out there, I did a lot of Bollywood dancing, part not dance. I was able to keep up with, sort of keep up with my fitness when I was performing for shows. But in between, I had no structured um, fitness plan. I actually had no fitness plan. And when I got into med school and I stopped dancing as much, 
I realized that my body was changing. I had gained a lot of weight. I didn't feel as healthy. And that's when I realized that I need to do something and I need to figure out a plan that works with my schedule that I can utilize in medical school residency. And that's when I started exploring options with health and fitness. And it definitely didn't come from home. You know, my, my parents are not that into fitness and my cousins were doing it. So I kind of had to find my own path when it came to how am I going to work out? How am I going to do this? And back in the days, we didn't have, you know, social media or YouTube videos, or definitely my parents weren't paying for a personal trainer for me. Um, so I kind of had to figure all that out myself. And now today, I feel like that was such a journey for me. And that's why I'm here to try to help people navigate just getting fit or getting healthier, which is always the goal. It was never weight loss, but it was feeling good, being mentally, um, I guess, mentally just sound. And, and that's what fitness brought for me is so much happiness and so much just, um, how do I even say it? It brought peace. Like I felt much better when I was in yeah, like I felt much better when I was in medical school, when I was resident, when I was healthy. And I started realizing that as a physician, if I'm preaching health and fitness and taking care of your body, then I have to actually practice it myself. And I have to find that, that mo the motivation, that, um, that journey on my own. So that's, that's how I ended up here. Um, but I just recently had a baby, unlike mm -hmm. Salima and Pamela, yeah, thank you, who are amazing, amazing moms for a long time. I just entered motherhood about 19 days ago. Um, Girl, the fact that you were even like, I know, right, with your <laughs> hair and like just looking normal <laughs> is like, yeah, just amazing. you. <laughs> So yeah, I had a baby 19 days ago, and that was very hard for me because my body changed so rapidly. I had never, you know, I couldn't even see myself down there. Like that never happened before. Like everything was so different. And I was trying to navigate, you know, these nine months have been like, wow, my body is rapidly changing. What am I going to be doing? And I think what really, really helped me was having a sound fitness plan prior to getting pregnant. Um, I would never recommend anybody start a new fitness um, plan or start, you know, intensely working out while they're pregnant, I would recommend continuing your fitness plan into pregnancy um, and always talking to your OB before you do anything fitness related during pregnancy. So I was navigating my pregnancy, trying to work out. And now post-pregnancy, I'm trying to figure out how my body is going to either go back to what it used to be or go back to what would be the new norm or the new normal for me. So um, speaking about pregnancy, actually, I wanted to talk to Salima over here. <laughs> so you dealt with diastasis, right, during your pregnancy. Do you want to mm -hmm. kind of elaborate on that? Because a lot of women go through that. They suffer through that. And, and I know a lot of people who dealt with it. And it is so emotionally taxing. And to see your body in a new version of your body, it's, it's very difficult. Like I, I'm going through it right now. And just having somebody talk about their experience would be very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, part of it was I didn't even know I had it, right? So if you don't, knowledge is power. So that that's my biggest thing is I went through this period. So I had my fourth baby and I was like, I'm done. You know, it's time to get my body back, right? And part of it was like, I want to show the world. I want to, you know, I want to be like this mom who, who gets it together. So I was on a sprint, right? 2020 is hindsight. You know, postpartum recovery is never a sprint, first of all. You know, it's a lifelong marathon. And so I was in this phase where I was like, I went to town to work out, right? And I went back to the gym and I was doing all my cardio and it wasn't working. So then I said, I'm going to try something new. And I tried like group fitness training, right? It was very popular. It still is four years ago. It was very popular. And I was like working out. I was seeing change. My arms were getting toned. My legs were getting toned but my belly was not. My belly in fact was actually looking bigger, right? And I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, this doesn't feel right. Like, what is going on? Like, why do I have this like pooch sticking out, right? So my husband would be like, no, no, no. You know, no, I, I, you know, I love all pieces of you. Don't worry, you know, it takes time. And I'm like, you're supposed to say that, right? And then I'd be <laughs> like, everywhere I went, it was like, people would like, you know, they look at you like, oh, is she pregnant or is she not pregnant? But they don't ask, right? <laughs> And aunties would be like staring at me. And so I asked my mom even one day, and my mom's like the sweetest, kindest person to begin with. And now I'm her daughter, right? So she looked at me and she like paused. And that for me was like, oh, you, you know, like she paused, right? So she's like, no, no, you know, we're Gujarati. She's like, it's that I'm much it, which means it's all in your head. And I'm like, it's not all in my head, right? So, <laughs> but still, you know, I'm still like not fitting into my clothes. And so I'm still working out and I'm like, 
one day at home, it's like midnight and I'm like crunching my hat, you know, and I was angry at my, my belly. So I grabbed it and literally my four hands, four fingers just like sunk in. Right. And I was like, what is this? Like, why is my whole hand like falling into my stomach? And I, my husband's an ER doc and I had called him and he was working and I called him in a panic. Like my whole hand fell into my stomach, like a crazy person here I'm talking. And he's like, what is going on? And you know, long story short, ends up I have this thing called diastasis recti, right? So diastasis is separation and recti is of your, you know, recti abdominis muscles. So we have a right and a left and they kind of sit right here and down the line is your linea alba, okay? So your linea alba is a fibrous connective tissue. And normally it's nice and tight and firm and the muscles are like close together. When you get pregnant, it's supposed to stretch, right? You want it to stretch because it accommodates for the growing uterus and it you know, prevents you from building up pressure in your belly. Now for a lot of women, after you deliver, it sort of snaps back into place. So think of it like silly putty, like you stretch it out, it gets really thin and then it can come back together. But for a lot of women, it doesn't come back together. And in fact, um, there was a study that reported about a third of women one year postpartum have diastasis recti, which is huge for the number of deliveries we get. Yeah. And so for me, you know, discovering that's what I had um, made me realize, well, everything that I was doing up until this point working out was actually making it worse. So when you work out and you have diastasis recti, you can't do things that is going to put pressure in that area, right? Because your that that linea alba is so weak, you need to strengthen it. And so if you're planking, right? If you are, you know, doing mountain climbers or if any if push-ups, right? You're putting pressure on on that linea alba that's already weak. So it's just getting weaker and weaker. So I had to sort of all together redefine what working out was for me, right? So I, you know, I did see a PT at first and my fault for not selecting a PT that was actually a pelvic, you know, health specialist because I, they actually specialized themselves. So the PT I saw was like, yeah, you can do some exercises, but your gap is really big. It's probably, you're probably going to need surgery, right? So I was like, you know, at that point I was like, I don't want surgery. Like, so I, I actually became my own teacher and I, you know, changed my entire workout routine. And, you know, that's when I was like, that's when I started to notice the change. And you, you almost, I would say within like eight weeks, like my belly started to flatten out. Um, and, you know, one thing for me was throughout this whole process is just, you know, if you, if I didn't know or discover that I had it, like I would have continued to work out the wrong way. Um, now finding time to work out is a whole different story. That is something I still struggle with. <laughs> Um, and I, and I definitely turn to, you know, Pamela for inspiration on that because orthopedic surgeon, solo practice, mommy to three. I mean, how do you find the time? <laughs> um, I think that is the question all of us moms are, um, struggle with because sometimes for us, it's really hard to prioritize self care when we're all day taking care of other people, right? We taking care of our patients. So we, we already had that before we had children. Um, and then, you know, taking care of if you have a spouse and, and by taking care of, I don't mean in the traditional sense, but just being there for them and connecting with them and then taking care of your children. So for me, I have to schedule it in. Like I literally have to feel like it's a meeting or it's, you know, two patient appointments, you know, or something like that. And I have to, at the beginning of the week, just tell myself like, these are the days that I am working out. And this is the, and I literally in my mind, just like people meal prep, I prep myself for my exercise. I'm like, this is the time I'm going. This is the class I'm going. Um, kind of every, every little thing I'll have time to shower and take the kids to school. Or if I won't have time to shower, like I can throw this, like I have to go over the whole thing mentally. It cannot just be a wake up that morning and yeah. be like, today I'm going to work out at some point. It, it just, it won't happen then. I mean, I think that that's even probably true. Um, and, and Poonam, you can probably speak to this in a little bit about starting to work out whenever you're starting something new, you kind of have to build it into your schedule so that it becomes a routine. Um, so for me, I, I, it's, it's, it's actually a form of my therapy. Like I feel like I need it so much for my headspace. Um, that for me, I just think of it as something like this, you know, a self-care thing. And, and, and now it's become like something like taking a shower or brushing your teeth. 
you wouldn't go the whole day without brushing your teeth. Maybe not shower, but you would you wouldn't you wouldn't do that. You would eat food, you brush your teeth, you shower. So you should work out because not only like is it just about, you know, for I know this is as a joke, this title is getting your sexy back, but as a mom, you've got to have a lot of energy for your children and just for the kind of life that you have as a physician or a working mom and um, being able to run around with them and running all the errands with them and everything like that. And for me, part of it is just about being strong. So anytime I get down on myself of like, oh, I haven't you know, lost all my uh, baby weight, my third one is 11 months old now, or um, I don't look the way I wanted to look, thought I would look or the way I looked before, I really try to concentrate on the strength aspect of it, that I'm making myself stronger and this is my new body and I want to nourish it and I want to make it strong and I want to be the best that I can be. So um, also the other thing, tactics I use to fit in workouts is, um, for me, it's just, it doesn't matter if it's at lunch or between patients or late at night after the kids go to sleep or early before, I don't have a specific time of day. Um, I know a lot of people do like everybody probably has, has seen Renee Paro and she always works out at like five in the morning. I mean, five always, in the morning, <laughs> five in the morning. I cannot do that. And especially when you have a young baby, that's really hard to do also, because maybe you've been up all night and, you know, give yourself grace in that first couple of years. But um, other tools that have helped me before COVID um, kind of shut gyms down is um, I used ClassPass. And I thought ClassPass was super helpful because they have all the classes in your area, all the times, every kind of class, like yoga to weightlifting, everything. And I could just kind of pop on there and look at some random times that I knew I was going to work out. Um, we did get a Peloton, which helped me too, because I felt like I needed to do a good amount of cardio after I'd gained so much weight with my kids. Um, and then, you know, beach body videos and just kind of quick 27 minute um, workouts I've seen on YouTube. So, but, and, and then I think I've, re I've gotten really relaxed on having, um, like before I had children, I would be like, okay, today's my cardio day. Today's my leg day. Today's my, you know, this is my arm day. And now I'm just like, whatever I can do for, you know, 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes, I will take. So <laughs> carve out the time and then I pop in whatever is going to be easiest at that time. So I think that's kind of, and I've many a times at lunch ran and gone to an orange theory class and come back and like, you know, sprayed some perfume and threw the hair up and just put on a white coat and went and just showered later. I mean, it might be gross, but that, that is what I have done. So you just have to make it a priority and you have to kind of see past the physical aspects of working out and more the mental and the strength in your insides and kind of just decide this is going to be scheduled in just like anything else that you do every single day. Um, but Puna, maybe you can, you can kind of elaborate on how to get starting to work out. Like, I know it's kind of hard to, to start something. No, I hundred percent agree. I think in terms of anything, when we want to do something, we keep thinking about it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. Um, but how do you put that into action? And I think the best way to do it is just to start. Don't wait for the right day. Don't wait for the right outfit. Don't wait for the right space. Just start. Um, and so if you're thinking about working out, make a, make it a schedule. Just say today at 5 p.m., tomorrow at 8 a.m., I'm going to do it. Um, and the way I think I help people just start is to find a space, whether, you know, it was going to be the gym prior to COVID or if it's your garage, like take out a space that's going to be your workout space. Because once you have that space, you'll, you'll be able to go there and create a workout there. Whereas if you don't have a space, you don't have a place to go, you're just going to be sitting around and not know, hey, where should I go? What should I do? The second thing is um, to have a plan. So start slow. We don't want anybody to be going into a marathon running or, or, or anything high intensity. Start slow. Whether that's a 30-minute walk with your husband or your mom or your dad or anybody, start slow and start taking out. 20 minutes or 30 minutes to do something that you like. Some people it's dancing for me. I could just dance around for 30 minutes and that's my workout for some people. It's a walk or a bike ride, but start slow. Um, the third thing is, is that once you start, don't do it every day because you're going to get burnt out, burnt out very, very quickly. If you go seven days in a row. And then I see people go months without working out because they're just so burnt out from those seven days of, of exhaustion. 
So I tell people, start slow, do 30 minutes a day, take a break for a day, and then do it again. Go back to your, that space that you created, whether it was outdoors, in your garage, in your basement, um, and go back to that space and do it again. Initially, I tell people, start about two to three times a week. You don't need to go all out. You just need to start building a routine, building the habit of working out. And then you can build from there. Um, another thing that I find um, very helpful is to find a buddy either or an app. A lot of people like the Nike fitness training app. A lot of people like ClassPass. For me, as a physician, ClassPass was amazing because sometimes I'm like, I have an hour and five minutes. Like, let me find a class that I'm going to just jump into. Um, and I think they're doing a lot of online classes as well. So find something that you can count on that's going to be there for you. Um, and I say that's your support system. So whether that's class pass, whether that was Equinox classes or any kind of gym classes, it could even be your friend. A lot of people like going for hikes and walks with their friends. And that helps you be accountable. Even class pass kept me accountable because I'm like, I am not wasting those credits. I'm going to yeah. use all my credits. Yes. Right? <laughs> You're all at the heart cheap. I'm like, I am yes. not <laughs> up in the morning. I'm not paying that late fee. I'm not losing my credits. <laughs> oh, I love the late fee. As much yeah. as I hate paying the late fee, I love the late fee because I'm like, I am not wasting $20 of my hard drive <laughs> yeah, <I> money <laughs> on a late fee. <laughs> So like I forced myself to go so I don't have to pay that late fee. So I actually love the late fee concept because it keeps us, you know, accountable again. Um, so these are just a few ways to get started on working out. And again, my biggest advice is if you want to work out, don't wait for the perfect time or the perfect mm -hmm. day. Just start, you know, and start anywhere, even if it's a five minute thing. And I always tell people never do anything too harsh in the first few weeks um, because you want to be able to go back and keep doing it. You don't want to be exhausted from it. You don't want to feel like it's a chore. You want it to be fun. So start slow and then build up your stamina. Um, from there, I actually was in Ask Alima because she does these quick workouts. Um, <laughs> So yeah, absolutely. What's your, what's your workout plan? <laughs> so first of all, I would say my that it took me a while, I, and I did, I actually you know I so I was doing this group fitness training, and one day you know it was really popular four years ago. So if you didn't show up on time, you would actually lose your spot, right? And so you know I had four kids rushing to leave the house was you know you have it's just so much organization, right? You have to get the nanny, the grandparents. I mean, yeah. it's just too much. It was a lot of work. So one day I'm like rushing and like kids are crying. I'm leaving them crying. I, I make it to the class, but I'm late. And there was a wait list. So they gave my spot away. And that for me was, you know, that was the breaking point. You know, it was the straw that broke the camel's back because I was like so upset because the lady was like, well, I put you in the five o'clock class. And I'm like, but I don't have time for five. This was my hour now, you know? And so then I get in the <laughs> car and I, and I like start crying. I literally start crying because now I'm so upset that I can't work out. Right. And then after that, I was like, forget it. I'm just not going to do this. Right. So I like, you know, give up my membership. And then I'm like for days lying in bed and like just unhappy and miserable because I was really stuck on this notion that you needed 45 minutes to work out, right? 45 minutes to an hour. And I was like, if I don't have that, I'm just not gonna work out because working out in 15 minute segments or whatever is not gonna make a difference. And then one day I was just like, I was so miserable and I was like, but why not? Why, why, why can I not work out? Like why, what's telling me that I can't? It was just my voice in my head, right? It's that voice that's like, this is the traditional way that you should work out. This is how you're supposed to do it. So then I just woke up one morning and I was like, forget it. I'm just going to start slow, but I'm going to show up and do it consistently. So I knew I had like 15 minutes before, you know, get having to go to work and all that. And I was like, I can do 15 minutes in the morning and I can do 15 minutes at bedtime. And if I fit something in, like Pamela was saying, in, in the middle of the day, perfect. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started working out and really you notice change and over like two or three months people are like oh what are you doing and I was like what you know they were like what what you know did you get a trainer what are you doing and I was like no I'm just like working out but showing up every day because like you know I was finding that 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night and doing it consistently five to six days out of the week and it took the pressure off of trying to take that you know trying to find time with my husband and telling him like I need to work out for an hour and so yeah. it just made a huge, huge difference on like my ability to work out. And so now I do these like seven minute workouts. I mean, pretty consistently, um, 
it's part of my workout routine. So like, even when I'm cooking dinner or and like waiting for the pasta to cook, you'll see me like squatting my kids will yeah. squat them out now that they're older squat with me. at work. I try to do like, you know, I can spend my entire hour charting. And so I try to like get up and move for seven minutes and believe it or not, you come back more refreshed, you know, just like, I feel like, Oh, I took a break. So now I'm like focused. Um, and then I work out in the evening a little bit and it really just, it lets me show up in a way, and, and, and now that my kids are older, we kind of all work out together. Now, to get my cardio in, I, I do, I either will go on a walk, and I, I got the Peloton six months ago, so I've been really happy <laughs> with that as well. Um, and, and so for me, it's just been, you know, taking that mindset of like, whatever you had in your head about what working out should be like, you know, toss it aside, do what's best for you, you know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, what it sounds like is consistency and small changes can lead to big results. Um, kind of, I think, I think right. that, that's a hard thing in the moment because you want to see those big results quickly. And you think mm -hmm. all of us being in medicine or type A probably, or a lot, you know, we've, we're, we're the kind that have all like just ground, grinded it out <laughs> by studying a lot to get what we want to do. And it sounds like, you know, this is a little different. It takes some time um, and just a little bit of uh, consistency and dedication. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I, I think you nailed it, Pamela. That's absolutely right. Um, oh my God, I think we're we're out of time, guys. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, so much fun talking to you, but I definitely yeah, I know. I want to save some time for Q and A so people can ask questions, if that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah nice. this is pre-recorded, but um, Salima and uh, Ruhi Jelani will be on the live session um, to answer your questions. And I think Ruhi's going to discuss a little bit about um, pregnancy and working out also. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and fertility and, and working out. So yeah, I'm excited about that one. I didn't make it last minute just now because she got stuck in a case. So um, yeah, we missed, she's going to be here. So we yeah. missed it. So right. everybody, everyone would want to drop their handles or where we can, oh, yeah. um, where viewers can find us. Why, why don't you start, Salima? Yeah, so I'm most active on Instagram, so Dr. Salima. Um, feel free to reach out anytime. I am your biggest cheerleader. I'm all about getting your body back after babies. So reach me anytime. Nope. Um, you can find me at Dr. and Dancer, and I'm going to just echo what Salima said. You can DM me, reach out to me. I love talking to all of you guys and trying to help people get back onto some type of fitness journey. Um, I'm at Dr. Pamela Mehta on Instagram, um, and, and same goes here, and kind of anything else about medicine and work life balance. So um, mm -hmm. it was great talking with you, ladies, and we'll yeah. see you in the live. Bye. Yes. Bye, guys.